Why my family moved to Spain? I'm answering all of your questions in this video. Hi ladies, it's Erin and welcome back to my channel. As many of you know, my family decided to, my husband and I decided to move the family to Spain temporarily. I know that I've talked about it briefly here on the channel, but I haven't really gone into great detail about why and how and all of that. So in this video, I'm gonna kind of get in the weeds a little bit and go through all of the questions that you've been asking over the last several months. First, let's talk about the why. We moved to Spain for a few reasons. One, we wanted our kids to really become fluent in Spanish. Spanish is very important, we think, and we really wanted to give that gift to our kids. They were already in dual immersion in the United States, so they had half of their day in Spanish, half of their day in English, and they were really prepped and primed to take Spanish to the next level, so they are in a Spanish school with other Spanish kids. They are the only Americans in their respective classes, which makes things a lot more challenging for them on the friend front but it also is really great in terms of language and learning the language. The second reason is that we are building a home and we had this period between our rental house lease expiring and the house being done where we didn't know where we were gonna go. So we were either going to rent something in Telluride, which is where we live, for way too much money because right now the housing market is crazy, the rental market is crazy, there's really nothing to rent, everything is very, 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 very expensive. So we were looking at renting a eh, kind of crappy place for way too much money and staying there or we hatched this plan of why don't we move to Spain? <laughs> if you watched my manifestation video, this is many, many, many months ago. It wasn't really a highly watched video. It is definitely a departure from my channel to talk about something like manifestation. But I did a whole video where I poured my heart out about manifestation and all of the ways that it's really helped me in my life and all of the cases where it's really worked. We will link it below in case you haven't seen it already. But in that video, I talked about how I wanted to live in Spain. Okay, I said that by the way in that video before any of Europe was even open to US travel. This was something I wanted to do for a while and put it out there into the universe and lo and behold, here we are. So we have been in Spain now since July. So it's been a little over three months and I would say that we love it, but it definitely has been a lot harder than any of us predicted it might be. I had kind of forgotten what it's like to live in another country. I did it once when I was in college. I moved to Paris for four months and coming back here and living in Spain, I remember just how difficult it is to be an expat and how everything from ordering deli meat at the grocery store to talking to the, the male person, all of it is more complicated for me because I didn't speak a word of Spanish before I came here. No, I did not, not a word, not one word. <laughs> I took French, which by the way, I really never used. I think I was drawn to French because I grew up near the Can Canadian border and we used to hear a lot of newscasts and, and radio stations in French and I loved the way it sounded and it sounded so elegant and sophisticated, so I was drawn to it. But I never really used it throughout my life and so I kind of lost it. But I was determined that when I got here I would learn Spanish, at least learn some of the basics. So now I can get around, I can go to the, the pharmacy, I can go to the grocery store, I can communicate on a very basic level for the most part. It is still not pretty. Sometimes there are gestures involved. Sometimes I have to pull out Google Translate and translate it right away, but I'm getting by and I'm figuring it out. The kids are having much more uh, success with the language. Gage is really fluent. Like an, the other day, a lady was stopped us on the street. She had a white, she had a, a lab and we have a golden. She's talking about the labs and the goldens and how they love each other and blah, blah, blah. And she talked so fast, it was like, blah, 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 blah. And I just looked at her like, oh no, I didn't understand what word of that. And Gage was like, see, see, uh, you know, he just, he understood everything she said. So I think that in terms of these guys learning the language, that has been a huge success. So I'm really excited about that. And I do want to tell you all about our travels as well, because we've been trying to travel on weekends as much as possible. So I think I'll do that in a separate video. And this one, I'll just stick to the nuts and bolts. Let's start with 
basic basics. So first off, why do we pick Madrid over like, let's say Barcelona or Mallorca or Valencia, Sevilla, wherever, Granada, any other city in Spain? We selected Madrid because we knew that people here really only spoke Spanish and it was a central location. I probably would have preferred like a smaller town or village, but Madrid has everything we needed. It's very easy to travel in and out of Madrid and it's all Spanish all the time. Like it's the epicenter of Spanish culture and language. That is why we targeted Madrid over let's say Barcelona, Barcelona, which is more Catalan. Like you have to learn Catalan in school as well as Spanish. So I didn't really want the kids to have to learn another language on top of the Spanish. So that was why we targeted Madrid. The second hurdle was where do you live? For weeks and weeks, I was looking at Airbnb. I was like, you know, dissecting it and reading reviews and going over it and thinking, well, how am I going to find an apartment for the family? And then I just turned to Chris and I said, I can't, I can't, I can't do this because I need to know more about the city. I need to know what neighborhoods are nice. I need to know where the schools are. I need to know where the grocery store is in proximity to the apartment. I need to know, you know, where the kids are going to school and can we walk to the school from the apartment? All of this stuff, right? That you really want in terms of a location. He said, I, I totally agree. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Madrid. We're gonna hire a consultant, which we did. It's a website called Welcome Madrid. I think it's Welcome Madrid. I will put all the resources below in the description box. So if you're like, what was that website again? Don't panic, don't worry. It's all in the description box below. We also did a very comprehensive blog post. So if you're visual and you like it all laid out beautifully, you can pop over to the website, busbystyle.com and see it there, okay? Type Spain in the search box. We hired Welcome Madrid, their consultant named Ines. So Ines helped us look at different apartments the first week we were here. So the first week we were here, everybody was in a jet lag coma. We were all very tired and disoriented. But Chris and I were like hopping around looking at apartments. We didn't have Traveler here yet, so I'll, I'll talk more about Traveler in a minute. Traveler is our 85 pound golden retriever, okay? We'll get more uh, into Traveler in a second. We go hopping around, looking at apartments. We found this great apartment. It was like so glamorous and like kind of quintessential, you know, European Spanish with, with the windows and the doors. And we applied for that apartment. We didn't get it. And then we ended up going with this apartment. It's a little more modern, not quite as like traditional Spanish as I would have liked, but because of the location. It's in a beautiful neighborhood. It's on a quiet street. It's close to the schools. It's close to the grocery store. There's like three grocery stores within two blocks. The best shopping, the best in this area. It's awesome. So the location really couldn't be beat. And that's that's really why we ended up here. They were also a little more flexible with the lease. They were more flexible with uh, like services, like they offer cleaning service once a week, which is great. This really was the right choice for our family, given all of those variables. First, we figured out what city we were gonna stay in, and second, where are we gonna live? So now, before I go on to schools, let's talk about Traveler for a minute. How do you get your dog to another country. This is probably the most difficult part of the process if I'm being fully transparent and also the most nerve wracking. If you read anything online, there are horrific stories about people flying their dogs internationally and arriving like covered in their own feces and urine and all this, I mean, horrible stories. So I of course read all of them because <laughs> that's so healthy, but you just wanna know like what what are we looking at here? So we hired like the most reputable service that we could find. It's called Air Animal. Again, link will be in the description box. And we ordered the VIP service, which was like yeah, indirect flight. So there's no long direct flight. You go on a short indirect flight. They take your dog out of the crate, take her for a potty run, poo run, give her some food and water. They treat her a little bit more humanely, let's say. They also, you know, do this, it's like this whole thing of like helping you with the customs paperwork and all the paperwork involved too because you're bringing an animal into another country so there's a lot of paperwork involved. That we had a book a little further in advance. I think that was the, that was more complicated, more difficult than like getting ourselves here. So if you're thinking about doing this, make sure you handle the pet situation first, unless of course you're not bringing your pet. We made the decision that it was really important because it was a longer period of time and we just both couldn't imagine doing this without our dog. We love her, she's part of the family. So yes, it created kind of a logistical nightmare, but we're both so glad she's here. So 
I think it was worth it. And she arrived totally fine. She smelled fine. There was no feces or urine, so they did take her out and let her go potty. She did about three days later start coughing, so she got kennel cough. I think from being held at, at customs. So we had to, you know, deal with that for a couple of days. I would say all in all, she was she was doing great and she was so happy obviously to see us and we were happy to see her. I think she had a little bit of just fear from the, the trip. She was just a little bit clingy for a while, but um, to be expected, I mean, can you imagine? I, I mean, it's scary for her. She doesn't know what the hell's going on. I think that was the hardest piece of the puzzle. Step three was where do the kids go to school and how do you get the kids into school? Because that's a whole thing too. We use the service called Step Into Spain. Again, link in description box, don't worry. Our consultant, her name is Sinead and she's from Ireland and she helped us get both kids into the same school, which is really important to us. We didn't want one kid in one school and one kid in the other school. She also helped us to get into a school that is very, very close to the apartment, which is amazing. And it's also a true Spanish school. It's not an American school in Spain. It is a true Spanish school. Once that box was checked, I felt like, whew, whew. Oh, that was like a big one. That was a big one. I mean, the dog oh, was like, oh, I can stop sweating. And then the school, all right, we're good. Worth noting that we had a little time between, you know, getting here and getting the kids into school. So we did start intensive Spanish lessons right away. The school that we went to is called LAE Madrid, LAE. And we'll put a link to that below in the description box as well. And they do all kinds of different intensive classes. You can do a group class, you can do a private class, you can do two hours, you can do four hours, whatever floats your boat. I started with four hour group class that lasted for two weeks. And then I was like, this is soul crushing. So I switched to two hour private and that was much better for me. And I did that for, I don't know, two, three months, maybe two and a half months. And then I decided that I needed more free time for my well-being, mental well, well-being. <laughs> so I stopped going to classes, which definitely hasn't helped my Spanish, but I am out every day doing things. So I feel like I'm always speaking to people in Spanish. Poco a poco, little by little. Okay. What about work? Like how do you work from another country and how do both of us work from another country? You guys know what I do, right? This is what I do. I can do it from anywhere. It's all, it's all online. My team is all virtual. They're all over the country. And actually we have a couple of uh, contractors that are in other countries, but mostly we're all virtual. So it doesn't really matter. I can work from anywhere. The time change does impact us a bit because my day is really the middle of the night. You know, we just have to schedule calls later in the day. That's it, no big deal. It's really not that big a deal. And then with collaborations and products, that obviously is a little more tricky because I can't just get Nordstrom shipped here, you know, ASAP and be here in two days. I did place a gigantic Nordstrom order. Like I was trying to get as much as I could. It was like $2,000 worth of Nordstrom stuff. I think I paid just, it was like a thousand euro in duties and tax. V, what is it called? VAT is the tax. So I didn't do that again. That was really bad. <laughs> so I feel your pain for all of you who are like, but Aaron, I'm, I can't shop the Nordstrom sale. Yeah, I hear ya. Like it's, yeah, you can't, you really can't. So instead I've been looking to places that will ship internationally that already have distribution centers here in Europe that makes it a lot more affordable. And then also just taking advantage of the shops here in Madrid. So they have a department store called El Cortes Inglés and I can go there and I can find mainstream brands that I can still showcase and share with you all that you all have access to either through Nordstrom or Neiman's or Saks or wherever Bloomingdale's, but it's limiting. It's, it's not like all of the brands that I'm used to. It's not all the brands you're used to. It's, it's more of like a European, uh, brands like, uh, Parisian brands like Sandro, Mage, BA and SH that's French, Eero, Eero Paris. They're more like French European brands, Italiano versus where I usually shop, which is Revolve and Shopbop and Nordstrom. It's not all of those Nordstrom in house brands. It's going to be more of these elevated European brands. So that's been kind of a difference in terms of, uh, of, of shopping for me and, and of work for Chris, you know, people always ask me, what does he do? Like, oh my gosh, he does like 8,000 things. So it's hard to like 
sum up, give you the headline. He does a little of everything, but I can tell you that he basically works for himself. So he, like me, can work from anywhere, which is how this is able to function and work for the family. So if you have like a corporate nine to five and you've got to be there and you've got to punch in, you got to punch out, like obviously this isn't going to work for you. But if you have flexibility and you work for yourself or you work virtually, why not? I mean, why not do something like this? I think it's been an incredible experience for our family so far. I'm so glad we made this decision. And even though I have days where I'm like, I'm so homesick and I just really want to have like my regular routine and normalis normalcy back. There are other days where I'm like skipping through Madrid and Retiro Park and thinking, wow, this is really special. It's a really cool experience, I think, for the family. And an eye-opening growing experience for us all because you really learn about a lot about yourself, another culture, another language. You grow a lot from this experience. The same way I did when I was, you know, 21 years old, I still am growing from it when I'm 47 years old. So I don't think there's an age cap on growth. I'm always growing and evolving. Another question you all have been asking about are the kids, like what do the kids think? What are their impressions? And they're just like Chris and I, like they have days where they're like, oh my gosh, mom, I, you know, I got this great grade on my exam and I beat other kids in my class and they're native Spanish speakers. And you know, there are those days. And then there are the days like, I really want to go home. I'm really homesick and tears and overwhelm and no one likes me and um, I don't relate to anyone here. When I hear stories like that, I can understand why parents would choose to send their kids to an American school because you then have this built-in kind of friendship. If primary purpose is language and learning the language, I think we did the right thing. It is making it a little trickier for the kids to kind of feel like they fit in. But I also think that's going to be a growing experience for them that will stay with them forever and give them confidence to really stand on their own two feet. Like they're they're navigating something that most nine and 12 year olds do not have to navigate in their life. And it's really hard. I'm really proud of them. I'm really, <laughs> and I wanna cry because I don't wanna ruin my makeup. I have to shoot more videos, but I'm really proud of them. It's It's not easy. And I think that they've handled it so beautifully and I couldn't ask for more. And then how, how am I and what are my impressions? So I love this city. I think it's absolutely stunning. I think it's so clean and lovely. Like we came actually from New York City to Madrid. You guys know I love New York City. I lived there for almost 10 years, but New York looks like a dump right now compared to Madrid. I mean, Madrid is sparkly clean <laughs> and beautiful. And just so, you know, like the architecture and the, the weather too. I mean, in the summer it was horrible, but now it's just so beautiful. It's warm and sunny. There's so much sun here. It's like uh, Colorado, just sunny every day. Like a cloudy day is very rare. There's hardly any rain. It's dry, but it's not as dry as it is in, in Colorado, which is great. So my my skin's not peeling and cracking like it does normally this time of year. The food's been a little bit challenging for me. I would say they don't do a lot of spice here, or a lot of sauces, and I'm really like a spice girl. I love spice and I love sauce. So we order a lot of Indian food, <laughs> which is probably not the right thing to do, but we order a lot of Indian and Italian. I really like tortillas, the Spanish tortillas. My downfall, I would say, are the pastries, so the, the bread and the pastries. So I I think once every other day we go to the panetteria and get baguettes and croissants and napoletana de chocolate and just all of these delicious pastries. There's a, a, a bakery here called Manolo Bakes, which is, I mean, insane. Like it's so good. You can't even believe how good it is. Yeah. I mean, I don't think from a weight perspective, this is the best for me because I'm out of my routine and you know, all of the things that I normally eat. I think that's a fair trade-off, you know, for the experience and, and what we're doing and the experience that we're giving to the kids. And I think that it would be unfair to say that it's easy and that we're all thriving all the time and it's all fabulous all the time. That's called social media. <laughs> it's fake, it's a lie. No, it's it's definitely hard and I had forgotten how, how tricky it can be. So I feel like the minute I like stop the classes, the Spanish classes, I cut back on work, which was really helpful. I took some time, some more time for me to just kind of relax and enjoy the city. It gave me time to reset and really regroup and 
enjoy things more. So I feel much more settled and happy now than when I was trying to do everything still. So that's another like key thing I would say, like if you're gonna do something like this, don't try to come over and just do everything that you normally do, like pair back. Cause you're going to need like learning a language and hearing another language all day long already stresses your brain so much. You need to leave room in there for, for that. Don't try to do all of the things that you normally do at home. Leave some space there for the language and the culture and just being able to navigate a new place. Cause just think about how stressful it is to like move, especially if you're moving to a new city. That's basically what you're doing, except then you're adding a new language and a new culture into it. It's a lot. So you just have to kind of think about that when you're planning and you're really getting real with yourself about what you can handle and what you can do. That's where I failed. That was my like epic fail. I misunderstood how much brain bandwidth I would need for the language and the culture and the change. I have so much else that I wanna share with you guys from like the European style, which I'm gonna do a video about that and the things I'm learning and the trends that I'm seeing to like the beauty differences I'm noticing between Spanish women and American women. And also just some of the like healing and, and growth that I've experienced since I've been here. If you guys remember again from the manifestation video I did, many months ago I talked about EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization reprocessing. It's watching dots on a screen go back and forth and reprocessing trauma. So I've been doing that for many, many months and I just finished my last session, so I really wanna share that with you guys because it's been so life-changing and so amazing. So anyway, lots more coming up. So if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. If you don't mind, it would be really helpful if maybe you shared my channel with a friend, you could share it on your Facebook page or you could tell your friends about it or email them about it. I would really appreciate it. I think that's like a really lovely and organic way for the community to grow and for us to collectively reach more women, which is which is always the goal. We really want to help as many women as possible and empower as many women as possible. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you next time. Bye.